Hi, believe it or not, I'm Raquel from Scrap Cozy, but I have a cold, so please excuse my voice today. Today I'm bringing you a project that I wanted to do for months, an espresso capsule holder, and when the topic number 7 found object was announced by Pepper Artsy, it seemed the perfect excuse to bring it alive. I've incorporated different found objects, some from my stash, like the bulb or the chains, and few others created by me, like the keyhole and the filigrees. This is a long video, so get some popcorn or a cup of tea and enjoy. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create some embellishments, and for that I use some paper clay in some molds for actually sugar, for cake decoration, and now what I'm doing is painting them with some treasure gold. This one is onyx side. If my embellishments were black or a dark color, I wouldn't need so much treasure gold on top of it, I would just leave the background color to show, but since it's white I prefer to cover everything. It's surprising how the treasure gold completely transforms those white objects into something that actually has the feeling of being metallic. Two tips when you use treasure gold. First of all, if it's a new one like it happened to me, it has lots of turpentine in liquid status, so you want to mix it very well to make sure that the turpentine mixes with the actual product, so you don't paint basically just with turpentine, okay? And then the other thing is that turpentine or whatever the solvent is, has very strong smell. So you want to kind of paint in a, either a ventilated area or be ready because you may end up very happy. I'm finishing with my embellishments and my next step will be to paint the white cardboard that I had on the table. This is because I want to cut my own numbers out of die cuts and I want them to be metallic. So I'm basically creating my own metallic cardboard out of treasure gold. But before going any farther, the next step is actually cleaning all the surfaces that I painted with treasure gold. I'm basically buffing that metal with a paper towel so then it gets shiny. I'll do the same with the rest of embellishments and you will see that I applied far too much treasure gold but as I said I was trying to cover the white embellishments completely and to be honest it was also the first time that I was using treasure gold so next time I'm sure that I will be more sparring with it. I'm cutting parts of this cleaning, you don't need to see this at all, it's just for you to know that I just cleaned everything, all the pieces, okay? But it took me longer than actually what it's shown, so take your time. The next step is creating my metallic numbers and for that I'm bringing my cattle back to my table, I'm putting the numbers on top of the piece that I painted and I'm just cutting the piece to trim it so then it's the size that I want. I'm putting an A plate, B plate and C plate and I'm passing it through the cattle bag like four times as you can see so I make sure that it cuts it perfectly and when I release it I can see the magic coming metallic numbers here they go to be honest I didn't expect them to have this kind of strength body if you know what I mean because they seem that they are completely sturdy and very metallic which I love can you see them how they shine so my next step, because the cardstock was cream color, I'm just aging the borders with some distress ink. So I make sure that the cream border completely disappears. And that's it, my numbers will be ready to be sticked onto my project. My next step will be painting the chipboard panels, the front and the two sides. For that I'm using Nougat Fresco paint and I'm using a cut and dry foam to extend my paint. You could use a brush, no problem with that, it's just that with the foam I have the feeling that I don't use so much paint on it and it gets absorbed as needed. Well there I was a bit fed up <laughs> of actually getting it from the crash sheet and so I put it directly there. Well now it's done, everything is painted and then what I'm going to do is determine where do I need to paint the lines because I want to do like a fake wood panel so I know that it fits five boxes of Nespresso so I'm centering the first one and I realize that I need to measure eight centimeters on each side and that would be perfect so I'm just making those lines for the lines I'm using directly a fine liner in brown it's permanent so waterproof which is what I will need when I paint on top with my infusions and glaze to get that wood panel effect 
I'm just measuring where the other lines should go and I'm marking those with a pencil and then as I did before I will go with a fine liner to paint the lines and you will see that after I finish those first vertical long lines I'm going to bring the lines also to the bottom part to kind of extend my wood panels Now we are going to create the wood panel effect and for that I'm using satin glaze and rustic car infusions. I'm applying it on top of my first panel and I'm masking the rest with some post-it notes. So just applying some of this satin glaze, loading my brush and extending it. And with the brush I'm creating some of those lines thanks to both the pigments and the walnut crystals. I remove the post-it notes and I move on to the next section and I repeat the same. I mask the sections that I don't want to paint and then I apply some infusions, satin glaze and apply my brush. And as you may know by now, infusions are very difficult to reproduce exactly the same result. They are not very predictable, so that's the good point that you will get different and independent wood panels just if you work the areas independently. Make sure that you change your post-it notes now in a while because they get wet and they may stick to your project as it happened to me in other sections. But I'm not showing more sections, you know how it works. So basically you mask whatever you don't want to paint and paint on top of what you want. So let's move on to the next step. Now here you can see the wood panel completed and this is how it looks. So I'm going to do also the two side panels in the same way. These, they don't need to be divided. For me, this is a proper good size of a wood panel. Same process as before, infusions and then satin glaze. And I'm repeating this on the other side as well. You can leave it air dry or just heat set it with your heat tool to speed up the process and carry on to the next step. Now I'm going to put the things in place so you know what I'm looking for and also to determine where will my stencil go. So once everything is in place, I bring my stencil, I remove some of the parts that I don't need, and I basically get some crunch paste and apply it on top of the letters and words that I want to stencil. My crunch paste was very dry. I believe it is because it's about to finish, so in the pot itself there is a lot of air. I after doing this, I actually applied some spritz water and I think that the texture now is better. But then, well, at that point I was struggling a little bit with it, but at the end I managed to kind of cover everything I needed. I designed this stencil for the February release for 2017 for Paper Artsy and I like it very much. And although it's for teas, I believe that the quotes and letters are pretty fitable <laughs> for this project. So it reads Charles and Sons Importers since uh, 1802 and I think it kind of can fit on this um, coffee uh, themed project. There I'm fighting with the crunch paste. I don't know what happened but I was kind of pulling it out from the stencil with a craft knife. It was, well, to dry I guess. But I managed. There it is. <laughs> I'm using my heat tool so then everything is dry and I can move on to the next step. In this case what I'm going to do is painting whatever I just stenciled with some distress ink. So then I make sure that it pops out and then same on the be below, on the bottom part. And I will edge everything. But here, well you know, distress reacts with water and then I was applying it on top of a non pore surface, so it was very tricky for it to dry. <laughs> so when I was putting my fingers, I was kind of lifting some of it. So at some point I kind of had to go to my heat gun and try to settle, set it and dry it. Now I changed uh, this dress ink. I was doing first vintage photo and now I'm doing some ground the espresso on the borders and a little bit of on everything and I'm heat setting it 
and I'll repeat kind of the same on the two sides, on the two side panels. A little bit of aging, it's always good, <laughs> or at least I like it for a vintage look. Now it's time for stamping. I'm using the stamps ESC03, so Scrap Cozy 03, which is the same as the stencil collection, let's say. So I'm stamping the three flowers and I'm using VersaFine ink to vintage sepia. So then this is waterproof and it will allow me to paint with some glaze and infusions on top without smudging the image, once it's dry of course. So once everything is stamped and to move on to the next step, I'm effectively heating it so then it gets dry. And then what I will be doing here, because I stamped with that color, I prefer to change the letters a little bit and make them darker so they would fit with my stamped image better. I prefer it that way. And I use my sponge to kind of go again around the edges <laughs> for an even darker look. Not that I achieve much, but well. <laughs> and now with some uh, satin glaze and some infusions, this one is olive tree. I'm just getting my green ready and I'm applying it on top of the flowers. So for the leaves and the stems. I really enjoy painting with this technique. It's, I don't know, very relaxing, as I always say. <laughs> and as you may have seen me saying in another videos, like the one that I made for the make and take, for the crafting at Alipali, because basically it was a small size of this project, uh, which was just, well, a little cover for my tags for the All About Infusion series, and well, I made it at Alipali. And this is the extended version, which basically it's a very big <laughs> wood panel and all painted in the same, using the same techniques. You don't have to be very thorough and go to the line, to the detail, because we are using very little infusions with the glaze. And then even if you go beyond the line, it will be okay. It will look very nice anyway, so don't worry. This is just like a washed out effect. And as you can see, if you apply more infusions on top, you can get a darker color. So you can keep on playing around and adding more and more if you like more color to be there. Now I'm mixing some rustic car with some raspberry because I want to get like a red that it's not a red, a pink that it's more brownish or orangey if you want to say it that way. And I'm painting all the flowers, petals and fruits on these three plants. And again, as before, you may think that I'm not painting much and that this doesn't make any difference, but it actually does. I mean, if you see this image and you compare it against with um, the first image when I just stamped, they are completely different. They really popped out just because we just added a little bit of color. So I'm just bringing my two panels now, the ones on the side, and I'm painting, putting there also my embellishments, deciding where they go. And here I had the idea of actually stamping again on top of them. So then I bring the same kind of idea as in the front and it will be very nice. So I'm repeating the same technique there. So I will be stamping and then painting with glaze. I never thought that I would incorporate a bulb in one of my uh, projects, but I thought that it was so cute and I just suddenly found it. So it's actually a found object <laughs> and I decided that it should go here in this topic. Um, here I'm stamping the next flower and you'll see that I struggle a little bit with embellishments. One of them is underneath the stamp right now and I cannot remove it. You don't know how long it took me to remove it. This is a very high speed so I was there like, oh, I don't want to leave uh, well, the stamp because it will move, etc. But well, I managed and the image is well stamped, so good. And I had to remove also those other two for the one on top. But they looked okay and I really liked how they coordinate. So it's very well balanced, I believe, the distribution of stamping image and embellishments on both sides. 
So now same technique as before, I'm just speeding it up very very much so then you don't get bored basically and it's just as I did before, the combination of raspberry plus rustic car on the fruits and petals for the flowers and plants and then the olive tree for all the leaves. So I'm done with the painting and the stamping and I will bring in my cereal box which is my structure for the whole thing. I basically grabbed five Nespresso boxes, fit them in and then resized my Kellogg's box so it fit them perfectly. I opened that bottom hole there so then the capsules can get out from there and I put there like a little piece of cardstock at 45 degrees or so so the capsules could rest. And what I'm doing now, it's basically painting a little bit with some, I believe it's buff fresco paint, the things that I believe will be seen, which is just the hole and a little bit the surroundings of it. So just to frame it, because I'm sure that it will be seen <laughs> no matter how accurately I cut my panels. And I'm also covering the bottom part as well, which was dirty. It was dirty because basically it was standing in the kitchen for a long time being splashed with coffee so if I give it I don't know another more month it may have decorated itself <laughs> with the splashes here and there here I wanted to add a little bit of gold on the borders but I was not that happy that that metallic will fit in with the rest of metals that I had choose chosen so I went back to the treasure gold but I don't think that was a very good idea because while I was applying it with my finger my finger were a little bit dirty so I kept on applying it and then I made a little bit of a stain but well at the end of the day it looks okay I think and it's also because well vintage stuff normally um, get some stains here and there right but I decided not to carry on and not risk to have more of those I was okay with the bottom one but that's it and I decided to add also some treasure gold on the bottom part the part that was open and seen and that one I believe it was a good decision because the bottom part I as you will see at the end I didn't stick it to my front panel very well and I did that on purpose so then my capsules could get out easily from the Nespresso capsules so the next step for me is putting the embellishments in place and marking with a pencil where all the holes will be so then I can punch them through because this is chipboard, it's very thick, so I will definitely need a, a proper hole so I can put through my brads. And this, um, the purpose of putting brads as well is double. It's not only to decorate, it's also to keep my panel in place and fix it against the cereal box. I don't know about you, but I prefer to kind of stick things in a mechanical way, if you want to call it. So here it's with brads, but for instance, when I apply buttons, I like to actually sew them properly. I don't like to glue them with regular glue because I have the feeling that they may get out, even if you get a very good glue. All, I only trust um, hot glue as a proper glue or Mod Podge if you apply paper against paper, for instance. But um, I don't know, sometimes the double side tape tends to remove. So I prefer, well, a proper glue to be put in place or as I said, a mechanical thing. So here for the numbers, I'm using Mod Podge and I'm applying it on top, not only to fix that part, but also to cover my whole front panel because this will be in the kitchen. So I want to kind of be able to clean it if some splashes come here and there. Ideally, it would be better to give a third 
layer let's say i just did one because basically i didn't have more time to apply on it but um if i kind of have time i will give it a second uh, hand or three three layers probably and as you saw i don't know if you realized but the first one that i did kind of changed color and this is remember that this has some vintage photo distress ink on top so when i apply a water-based medium this kind of activates the ink so it gave more strength to that brown ink on top of my infusions i apply also mod podge on the two side panels and then i heat set everything with my heat gun but little by little i don't want to kind of heat everything so it can bubble or anything i'm just try to apply some heat some air until it's actually dry to the touch now with a permanent fine liner i'm just painting my hole from the keyhole so then i make sure that it shows black when my embellishment is on top you'll see that i repeat the same trick if you want to call it in the other keyhole that i have on one of the side panels and now it's time to make my holes on the chipboard using that pokey tool <laughs> let's say and i'm using a foam a piece of foam underneath so then i make sure that when i press with that tool i don't make a hole in my table okay and i'm making sure that i pass it through very well because brads are well are not very thin so they need to actually pass through very well so i'm making sure that the hole is pretty big i'm adding many embellishments on my project and most of them are attached to it by using brads and as i was saying before these brads will keep my panel attached to the cereal box not those two that i'm poking on the top those are for decorative purposes only but i like them and then i'm repeating also the same making holes there for the different embellishments i'm marking them with a pencil those screws on the top uh, they are called chicago screws uh, screws i believe and um, these are by tim holtz and these will be the screws that i would use to hang my capsule holder from a chain and there i have my bulb for this one i'm not using that pokey tool i'm i will be using a needle because it's too tiny and i don't want the whole hole to be seen basically so i want a tiny one there so i can just pass it through and that's it here i'm doing the other hole for the key holder and there i will be applying a hanger well a handle maybe <laughs> for the drawer which was for jewelry intended to but i like it very much and i thought yeah it would fit there it could fit very well there i'm making sure that i make the hole very very well very wide because those screws need a very big one and there i just marked a little bit and then as i said i finished with the needle because through there i'm putting my bulb and i will be sticking it to the back later with some cell tape so then it gets hidden the rest of the holes however will help me to kind of uh, fix everything in place as i was saying so i will need to put them in into the cereal box and then use those chipboards as a template to make further holes as i'm doing here i'm just setting the front there and then with the pencil and marking through the holes where i need to poke a little bit more there are many holes and i'm surprised that i actually managed to not move the front from the cereal box and all the holes match completely when i was putting the brats in place that was surprising for me because that doesn't happen very often <laughs> and then i'm putting there um the, the side board panel there and i'm marking also there the different holes that i will be putting through and same with the other side when I was just doing this, I didn't realize that doing all these kind of holes and mark them and then putting the brads in that you'll see, it will take me a long time. I, I didn't think it took me that long because I was kind of trying and doing it, right? But it definitely consumes a lot of time, but well, it has to be done, right? <laughs> so here I'm just fixing some of the embellishments in place just by one brad. The other brad will actually help me to fix it to the cereal box. I just don't want to put everything to fix everything, let's say, because they will be available, I mean, they will be seen through the cereal box, and 
Remember that my Nespresso capsules, my Nespresso uh, boxes, the five independent ones, will need to go inside that cereal box. So the more brats are that are there, the more um, stoppers <laughs> will be there against the boxes. So it will be a bit tricky sometimes to pass through the box completely, right? Or in other words, my brats may stop my boxes from fitting properly and I may, they may need a little bit of push <laughs> to get through. Now what I'm doing is making those holes in the places and I'm using also that piece of foam to make sure that I poke through something which is um, heavy and to make sure that I don't poke my own um, hand <laughs> and then I don't destroy the cereal box itself. I got that piece of foam from a package of C6 embossing folders. They use them so their packaging is not that flat, so it's just to add a little bit of rounding, if you want to say that. And I find them very useful, so if you come across one of those, just save them and now you know what to use it for. Almost there, few holes to go and it will be time for assembling everything together. So I'm using here some Mod Podge because I was trying to kind of, well, stick my cereal box to the front panel if it was possible. I know that it would dry and it would not completely stick it, but well, at least it would help a little bit. Now I'm passing through the brats and you don't see it, but I'm opening the legs of the brats on the other side. And I'm just making sure that the holes match, so then I'm passing them through. And I'm opening them and making sure that they are flat. I attached a few more. I really like the idea of putting those labels on the bottom. This is because I want to know which coffee will be on each side. Because I didn't want to um, show my boxes very well. I know the colors by heart because I'm an espresso lover basically. So I know that Arpeggio is uh, the purple one and Rosa Baya is the pink one. But anyway, I'm going to uh, write them on, well, on some labels and I'll put them there. So anybody not knowing can know what type of coffee they're having. For this side, I also apply some Mod Podge to try and stick it. But then I realized that my bulb is not in place yet. And it needs to be because the wire needs to be well hidden so I'm just passing it through now and then I will use a cell tape to fix it and I really like the idea of kind of applying the bulb in this way because it seems like a little lamp I basically took my wire and then went through the uh, bulb and then I just gave a little bit of rounds there and it just sticks perfectly and stays there so you can kind of orientate it differently if you want. Passing the screw was a bit tricky because as I say these screws are very thick so they need a proper hole there. So I'm kind of making sure that I reopen that hole. And then once in place I know that this will not move and that my panel will cover completely and always my cereal box. My apologize because I'm working on a 3D project this time and then my camera, well, is not that wide as to capture everything that I'm doing, but I can tell you here I'm just basically putting that keyhole over there with some brats and basically I'm doing the same type of things, applying the screws and apply some more brats on the other side. If you want to properly see all the details that these have on a more detailed way, <laughs> you can either go to my blog, to Pepperati blog, or just pause the video at the very end while I will apply some pictures so you can see them. Here I'm just putting the handle for the drawer. Well, this is not a drawer, but <laughs> I thought it looked nice. So some decoration over there. And I think I managed to kind of put almost everything in place. I think it's only one left, the one at the very bottom. And we're done with the brats. <laughs> was, oh, a complete nightmare to put everything in place. But it looks so nice. Well, I really like it. I don't know. Then what I'm doing is painting the back. I know it's not going to be seen, but anyway, it was dirty. So I prefer to just 
give it uh, one hand and paint one layer of uh, fresco paint. This one is buff, it's the same one that I used for the hole on the front. Fresco paint dies, dries very quickly, but I was applying a little bit more layers because I could see the letters from the cereal box and I didn't like that. So I, after that I dried with the heat tool very well. So then I can move on to the next step, which is applying the latest embellishments, the fleur de lis. <laughs> I'm putting it there with some hot glue, silicone glue. And then also for the filigree on the top, I'm just applying a fine line there. And this works very well. Just centering it there. And then the final touch would be that you are not seeing it, but, well, yes, I'm using the hot glue also to fix some of those um, holes that were there. So I'm making sure that they stick together and they give me a robust finish too. And then what I will be doing at the bottom to finalize everything with the hot glue is applying some lace. If you see I'm fixing the corners but I'm not fixing the bottom part. This is because as I said I want the cereal box to be independent from the front panel on the bottom part so then I can have some flexibility when I remove my capsules from the capsule um, holder. That will be easier. And here I'm applying a thin line for the lace and this again will kind of cover that bit which is seen but also gives a nice touch so it's both to hide and also to add a little more um, girlish if you want to say touch I really like to add lace to my projects if you have followed me for some time you know that by now <laughs> And now what I will be doing is uh, just applying some chain so you can see more or less the effect of how we will be hanging. So then it gives also like a vintage look. So here are some uh, close-up photos of the different details so you can see the results and all the embellishments that it has. Here is the chain as well. Here I put some labels already and you can see also the different embellishments. The bulb, which I love, <laughs> and the metallic keyhole, which I really like. So I can tell you that this works with the coffee in place. You can remove them and it's very nice to use. And I hope you want to try. So I hope you like the project. And if you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up or that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please leave me any comments. I will read them all and reply them all. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.